Hey, good afternoon. I'm Eric L. Donovan, the Mindset Disruption Strategist. Today is Sunday, October 2021. You know, according to dictionary.com, an odyssey is a long series of wanderings or adventures, especially when filled with notable experiences and hardships. And if we look around, what we see is that's the definition of life. But I also know that this journey carries a lot more weight when you run a business lead an organization, or carry the responsibility of the livelihoods of other families. So each week, I like to look at this odyssey from a kingdom perspective and ask this simple question. How do I know that the things I'm doing today won't damage my health, my faith, my relationships, and my productivity? Welcome to the Kingdom Odyssey. Today's topic is this, hard times. So earlier this week, I was talking to a fellow business owner that uh, runs a business a couple doors away from mine, and we were just having a conversation about the times that we live in and how hard they feel, and he made this comment. He was like, man, I just do not know how we turn the tide from where we are right now. A lot of the anger, a lot of the frustration, a lot of the even infighting that we see that's going on, and I saw a really interesting post on social media lately that I've seen reposted several different times, and I thought I would share it, which is this. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. Now, let me tell you, as I, I looked at that statement, I saw a lot of people like, yes, that resonates. That's exactly where we are. Here's what I'm going to tell you when I look at that statement. It feels like a weak statement. Because at the end of it, it really doesn't offer any solutions. I mean, how do we change weak men into strong men? It, it, I'm going to tell you, when I read it, you almost go, man, you feel guilty. You feel embarrassed. Like, man, what am I supposed to do about it if I'm a weak man and you're putting me in this place? Are we all weak? Can anything be done? And I think this leads back to the gentleman that I was talking to and his comment is like, can anything be done? Are we just, is it just hopeless? And I think this is exactly kind of capturing why so many people feel hopeless right now. Like we're on some sort of uncontrollable roller coaster. It's just, it's out of our hands. We're just going to have to ride the ride. Let me tell you what I think is really going on. And I was praying and thinking about this and God gave me a different vision for this same phrase. And I want you to listen to this and see how this is different, but also see how this is important. See, hard times cause men to call on God. Calling on God leads to good times, but good times causes men to reject God, and rejecting God causes hard times. What's my evidence of this? I mean, is this just something I've made up? No, this, if you go read the Old Testament, this is exactly what happened to the Israelites over and over and over again. From the time that they left Egypt to the time that they were wandering in the desert to the time that God takes them into the promised land to the time, I mean, through all the judges and all the kings and everything that's going on. It's a complete cycle of calling on God, rejecting God, calling on God, rejecting God. But here's the good news. God always gives us a a path back. God always offers us a solution. If we look in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 through 15, God talking to Solomon actually shows us the way. And, th and this is what he says. It says, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, right? So the all this stuff going on that we might even be feeling is going on right now. It's similar, right? It's not exactly the same. Here, but here's the instruction. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. See, we are standing in a time that is rejecting God. And God's like, look, all I need is my people to call on him. But I'm going to tell you, this is what I truly believe is going on. It's time for the men to stand up and to call on God. And yes, I said that specifically. I'm talking to men. See, I grew up in a home, and I love my dad, but where it was women who led, my, my mom and my grandmother was the spiritual force 
She was the one who was constantly calling on God. I have not seen a lot of godly examples of men standing up. And if we want to know what requires, what it's going to take in hard times is men calling on God. Now, women calling on God as well, but I'm specifically talking to men. We live in a world that is continually turning its back on God for the sake of, what do we say, inclusiveness, maybe for science, for all sorts of reasons that make us look more important and reject God. And what I keep finding is that mon men are finding it easier to sit on the sidelines, to go hunting, to go fishing, to go golfing, to watch, to date ourselves watching football games, do all of this other stuff. And I'm just going to tell you what, if we want to see things change, we are going to have to get off the sidelines. We're going to have to act and we're going to have to stand up and stand for the truth. That's what it's going to take. Now, that that's it. I mean, the choice is yours. So if this, this right now, this life, I'm going to tell you my experience is this life right now is spiritual warfare more than ever. And it's time to wake up the men of the kingdom and get off the sidelines that I keep talking about. I, I'm seeing things in a lot of different churches where there, there's a lot of good things going on for women. And that's great. But what I'm not seeing is the men of God's kingdom waking up and getting active. Now, what I, the first response that I may get is, Eric, okay, that's great. Yeah, let's go. What does that look like? Well, there's a lot of possibilities. That's not the discussion for today. I said, I don't want to be a downer. Keep coming back. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Here's the first thing you need to recognize. Because as a man, the first thing that you say is, hey, rah, rah, I'm going to run right into the fight. I'm going to go. And that gets a lot of people killed, especially without a plan. And the first thing when we look inside of God's word is first, the fight is God's, not ours. See, the first, the first thing that God says is, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. So right now, it's not our battle. It's God's battle. If we're willing to be an instrument of his, then he can use us. So it's time to start training. So you wouldn't go into battle without your training. You wouldn't go into battle without ready. That's what men of the kingdom and women of the kingdom, everyone needs to be doing. It's time to call on God. And I've simplified this pretty much down into three easy steps. The first one is spend time reading God's word. The second step is spend time talking and listening to God through prayer and meditation. And three is act on what he's saying. See, what would happen that if every single man and woman who heard what I'm talking about right here, dedicated and just decided, you said, you know what, I can find an extra 30 minutes in my day, 30 days I'm spending on social media, 30 days I'm wasting doing something, I promise we're all wasting 30 minutes somewhere. What if we committed ourselves to 30 minutes every day using 10 minutes to read the Word of God, 10 minutes to pray, and 10 minutes to just act on what He said. What if we used this Word and it actually became a playbook of us doing something? I think it would change the world. Don't overcomplicate this. I've told people before too, is like, you know, if you need something to read, start in Matthew. Read the Gospels. Read what Jesus was doing because in that example, we have an example of how to act, but that is what the training is Right now, what if we just committed to 30 minutes a day of saying, yes, yes, I'm in. Yes, I'm going to do this. And so this is what I'm looking for. If what I'm talking about resonates with you, if this is something you want to be a part of, if we move forward in this discussion, what I need you to do is type up in the comments, I'm in. That's it. Just type up, I'm in. If this resonates, you're like, I know someone who needs to hear this, then I want you to share it. Let them hear what we're talking about. We live in hard times. There's no doubt. But hard times, getting out of hard times, requires calling on God. It's the only way out. So if you're frustrated with how things are going, then let's join God in the engagement of how we get out of it. Now, here's the one thing that I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to challenge you to as you watch this video. If this video goes like most videos, the majority of I'm ins is going to be from women. I know a lot of strong spiritual women. I do. And I know some men that have incredible spiritual potential but keep sitting on the sidelines. And I'm just asking you to be in. Find 30 minutes. Read God's word. Just get quiet and pray and see what he says. See what he does. Guys, I've been doing this in a committed way for the last four years. It has completely transformed and changed my life. 
Man, it's time to get off the sidelines. It's time to wake up to the kingdom odyssey he's inviting every single one of us into. In Matthew 6.33, Jesus reminds us to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And he says, all these other things I'll take care of. And I found that to be true in my own life. So I'm looking for men and women who say, I'm in. Let's go. Because together we can create an odyssey of kingdom impact that will echo through eternity. God bless you. I'll see you next week.